This is the beginning of the, uh, the Fish Lake uh, bicycle trail. I'm about a mile up after you first start. And this is the first feature, that cave with the, uh, the latah deposits up in there. Okay, I'm at about mile 1.2, virtually right after you start the ride. Anyway, there's the, the main, most interesting, uh, well-defined deposits. That, that's the west side, okay? And on the east side, this basalt that looks almost like shale, wasn't that the leading edge of a flow? and it's folding over, and then all of that is exposed clay. But isn't this the leading edge of a, a huge flowing mass of basalt that, that was bulldozing this clay? Okay, now that I've found this fossil, piece, piece of leaf, and there's others down there, that, that means that that had to have been uh, solid and dry and hard when the, the lava poured over it. Otherwise it would have mixed it all up. Okay, I'm going to move on. But anyway, that means that that is pretty much the same as Deep Creek Canyon. That the clay would have to have been dry and hardened uh, for the lava to flow over it. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's not going to just flow over mud. It's going to push it all over the place. That's what I think. This is only about 100 feet further. I stopped again. But you notice, here, see, here's some clay. But every time next to the clay, the basalt is curled under and, and fractured like that. So... Not being a geologist, my guess is that it was bulldozing or pushing the clay or something. I don't know. That's why I'm hoping some geologists will find this and weigh in or come out here and do an analysis. There's mile marker four. And there's some uh, pillow zone. So does that, does that mean that that whole area there was a big lake? Is that why the floods washed away the basalt? Because it was weak from clay deposits? I also wonder about that. This is still a mile marker for... Anyway, what's that? A footprint? <laughs> and what's that? I, I think that's probably uh, a tree casting of a branch of... This is sort of the end, but it continues on paved like a mile and a half, and then you reach a fence that goes across the road. Uh, so if you go right here, and then you jog left to Fish Lake, it's only about a mile and a half, and each side of the road has got a good wide bike lane on it. So the thing is, continue on to Fish Lake from here. Don't just stop here and turn around like everyone does. When you get here, uh, Fish Lake is just barely over there. It's just a few hundred yards further. You see, there's the, uh, the north end of Fish Lake where the parking lot is. And there's this strange outcropping of unusual rock. And so I'm just taking this video for uh, reference. I'll take some pictures. There's the Fish Lake parking lot for those who haven't seen it. That dog there is, something happened to him. He's spooked or something. Maybe he's been abused. But he monitors the, uh, the coming and going from the parking lot. Just a couple miles before you get to Cheney. And there's this outcropping of uh, Laetal formation. But anyway, that that thing uh, right there, dead center, that's a tree casting. Okay, so this this clay, that's not the bottom of a lake or a swamp that the, the basalt covered up. That, that tree casting proves 
that this deposit was just land, like forest or something. Anyway, I'll take a picture of, of that tree casting so that it's more lit up. So I guess if the basalt flowed across just plain old land, you know, soil, forest floor, whatever, then I guess it's red, more reddish like that is, as opposed to the white, like the, the clay deposits. I think I read that these are actually Mount St. Helens deposits from, from way back. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think I read it. I just can't remember. But these obviously aren't flood deposits. Those are, those are modern day deposits within the last few thousand years uh, from the volcanoes. And this, this uh, I forgot, this is oh, about a mile and a half before Cheney. Something else I was thinking was those big layers like like that one that's you know a foot thick wouldn't that mean that that same layer could also be located in towards town at, or, or virtually anywhere that there's a road cut wouldn't that same layer have to be there even you know 50 miles away okay now that thing it it seems like it might be a pipe but i don't think it is I think it's coming from the basalt and that it just simply washed out that area that makes it look like it's coming from a hole. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. Here's a wood carving where they explain about the trains, but they didn't fill in the letters with black paint. So it can't be red. It really needs to be redone. Also, this water, if you blunder upon this video, just a fair warning, don't count on that water to be there. Usually it's not running. Also, if you check Google Earth, there's a big lake right behind there, just out of the field of view. But when you find out what it is, you won't be going there. This is the end. There's the parking lot up there. If you continue straight, it just goes out into the Columbia a plateau is straight as an arrow. It's very hard on bicycle tires uh, and you just don't see that much. If you want to go into town it's to your right and it's only like three minutes to go there. You can also take the bus back or you can take the bus here and then go back towards town and go downhill all the way. I'll start back at three. Uh, and see how long it takes at a leisurely pace not racing but not stopping and resting you know 20 30 minutes either just average pace Now I'm going to get on the road and take the road. Whew. See that outcropping, it's right at Fish Lake, the north end. But it's different rock compared to Beacon. Some kind of weird shale. It's coming up on 4 o'clock, so going from Cheney to Spokane would take oh, an average couple of average age and pretty good health you know maybe an hour and 15 minutes that's without racing but that's also not stopping and taking breaks mm -hmm. 